Do you recall any particularly humorous or unusual events? Uh, yeah, yeah. In the Navy, they have uh, something called the shell deck initiation. Every time a ship uh, crosses the equator, uh, essentially, uh, sailors dress up like pirates and they, they uh, make uh, make everybody that's never crossed the equator before, this is their first time, <laughs> make them dress up in silly costumes, they make them uh, roll around in, in grease, they, they shoot them with, with uh, water hoses, just make them do all sorts of silly stuff. Essentially make it, make it into this big production where King Neptune is coming on board your ship. And yes, there are a few who have been in this realm before the, the, the trusty showbacks. But you also have these slimy, slimy wogs, the polywogs. Those are the guys that have never crossed the equator before. We have to wash the filth off. <laughs> it just becomes this elaborate theme. So, so these guys dress up like pirates or shooting water hoses at these guys that are crawling around all over the deck. What did you think of officers or fellow soldiers? Uh, well, for officers, it de really depended on how how competent they were. Some of these guys are only become officers because they were at West Point or the Navy Academy. They went through some ROTC program and somehow that, that makes them better at their jobs. But for some of these guys, they're really no better than their, than any basic boot camp graduate. They have to be trained in order to be able to do their jobs. Some of the best officers that I've known are guys that were prior enlisted, and some, some guys that were enlisted longer than I have, and then became officers later on. So they know what it's like being on board the ship, what our jobs are supposed to be, and, and know how to expect us to, to do our jobs, and those were the best officers. Uh, for the enlisted guys, or fellow enlisted guys, it's pretty much the uh, the same thing. You knew the guys that were were competent, that were able to do their jobs, that were that were good enough to help train other people. And unfortunately, you also knew the guys that were just there to to buy their time, pick up a pay jokes, get, say that they served in the military. And then when their enlistment's over and they go home, you're you're glad to see them leave. So it really does depend on the person. Did you keep a personal diary? I did not keep a personal diary, but I was a photographer. I pretty much had a camera everywhere that I went. Eventually, I became the official command photographer when I was on board the USS Gary. So these are these uh, major port visits where we went to Singapore and Hong Kong or Cambodia. I ended up taking a lot of pictures when I was there. I don't know if that counts as a diary, but that's sort of how I kept up with things that were happening. Do you recall the day your service ended? Well, it technically ended twice, once for the Army and once for the Navy. Uh, for the Army, when it came close to the end of my enlistment, I was uh, sitting there walking on base, about to go off base, and then it suddenly hit me that it was four years later. It seemed like just... Yeah, I know it's cliche, but it seemed like only yesterday that I just graduated from boot camp, and now I'm about to leave. I was like, well, am I really prepared to leave? And the answer was, I really wasn't prepared to leave, but I was, my enlistment was over anyway. That's why I ended up rejoining and going back into the, into the Navy, because I wanted to continue serving my country, but just wanted to do something a little bit different, so I joined the Navy. Now, for the, the Navy, uh... I had re-enlisted when I was in, actually during the port visit to Vietnam was when I re-enlisted in the Navy. And I wanted to stay, but unfortunately the, the guys that keep track of these sort of things said that I was overweight and I failed to maintain physical fitness standards, so it was time for me to, to go home. So I didn't really want to leave the Navy, but I didn't really have a choice as far as that was concerned. But. Uh, 
that time I was definitely a little bit better, better prepared. Of course, I was older. I had the, the my van and my furniture, and everything was was ready to go. So I was when it came time to 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 leave, I was done. And I was out. Figured, well, now it's time to go to college and take my college money and uh, start attending college. So I was definitely better prepared to leave the Navy than I was to to leave the Army. Was your education supported by the GI Bill? Well, yes. Right now, I'm I'm attending uh, UA Fort Smith under the GI Bill, and essentially, that pays for all my my education related expenses, my tuition, my my books and fees and everything else. But it doesn't really give you quite enough, so I really have to hold the the job. I'm a I'm a mall cop. <laughs> Well, security officer over there at Central Mall, so I hold that job and that pays the rent and the utilities plus a little bit of extra money because I like having my my own uh, my own cable and internet and all the rest of that. So so that pays for all the rest of that and the GI Bill pays for everything related to education.